idea that what what? What, what? 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 That's awesome. Such power. <laughs> I said I was telling them about the debacle with coffee. This is right or wrong. Isn't that the coolest yeah. pen name in the world? Because yeah. she's a writer. Get it? Yeah. But it's but it's spelled different. Yeah. She's my finance. Yeah. We don't have a date set. We're no. just like, no we rush. just want to announce to the world that we're off the market. That's <laughs> <laughs> what that means, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So cool, since it's a solo panel, obviously we can, you know, tackle the normal Q&As. You know, we'll talk about voice acting. I can do silly voices for you and stuff. But since it is a solo panel, and I don't have this scheduled otherwise, I usually at other cons do a panel called Geek Talk, where we just talk about geek stuff. Yeah. Is that okay if we talk about that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Because Ryder here is what probably you would classify as a non-geek. Is that fair? Yeah. Oh. Get out. But we're, <laughs> we're converting her. He's working on it. He's working on it. Good. Slowly but surely. Yes. My kids have been working on it for years. <laughs> <laughs> this is my daughter, Victoria, over here in the corner. Hi. They kind of look alike. She's my mini me. <laughs> I went to high school with Ryder, and she looked like her daughter now, so it's a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, she looks just like you did in high school. I'm like, I know. The time machine. What? <laughs> Crazy. So yeah, geek. Uh, the world of geekdom. So you've seen like Marvel movies and you I enjoy those. I love those. I love those. There's something you are geeky about is Game of Thrones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he doesn't like Game of Thrones. I just haven't seen it. You haven't seen it. You didn't have any interest. No, because we watched episode one of season five. Yeah, because I have to explain everything. <laughs> 500 characters and they all die. Right? That's what he said. I'm like, watch this with me. That's what he That's said. That's introducing someone to a fandom the wrong way. <laughs> I, I know, know, I yeah. know, right? And you know, it's like, but well, we watched. Fear the Walking Dead together because that's only one season right now. It's only six episodes. And I like the regular Walking Dead. And she gave up because she's like a lot of people that are like, I hate Lori. Oh, I couldn't stand it. I wanted that baby to turn into a zombie and rip its way out of her stomach. I'm a writer. I write historical fiction about wars and stuff. So. So she likes to rewrite things. You yeah. know, listening to screenplays, watching movies, going, I would have done it different. Like, stop! <laughs> Unlock, just watch it, watch the movie! Oh, I'll sit there going, please, uh -huh. can we pause it? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, last, what was it last? Thanksgiving was the first teaser trailer to Force Awakens. And, oh, well, that was so cute, you guys. Okay, I'm in the kitchen cooking. He comes in there and he goes, stop what you're doing, you have to come watch this. I'm like, okay. So we go in there. He, we're watching the trailer. I'm watching him more than the trailer. His tears are running down his face. <laughs> 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 I was like, you're so cute. That looks so awesome. I can't wait. So I go back and start cooking. He comes in there and goes, you don't understand. I'm an eight-year-old boy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know then, he, then he ran in there and watched it again. I was like, that is so cute. Yeah, it was on Apple TV. Gigantic plasma, not plasma, 4K. I watch my 4K screen. Oh. Yeah, because sometimes I want to watch stuff, and I'm like, can't we just go lay down in bed and watch this? And he's like, that's not the 4K TV. <laughs> no. That's right, we have to watch true 4K. And the one in our room takes up a whole wall. Oh my wow. goodness. Well, but, but yeah. it's not 4K. <laughs> so 65 inches is a bit excessive for a bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not the 4K. Yeah. It's not the 4K. Well, I mean, it is a 4K TV, but there's no 4K content. Yeah, they, they yeah. know it was bad. Yeah. Anyone here know, doesn't know what 4K is? And you're like, well, I don't know what that is. Because she's like, I don't know what it is. I know now. It's like the next generation of HD. It's like three or four times hence 4K. Because HD is 1080p. Do people know what the P stands for? Progressive. Pixels. Wow. Pixels. <laughs> no, you're not alone. But that's okay. <laughs> so, 
She does what most nice, polite geeks do, non-geeks do, when geeks are geeky. She just nods and goes, uh-huh, cool, and she has no idea what's being said. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. my son does that. He, he understands all the technical terms, and he'll call me and he'll go, Mom, there's this new stuff, i got to tell you about it, I know you won't understand, but you're good at following my voice, and my wife won't listen. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So when his voice goes up, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. When it drops down, I'm like, man, that sucks. And then an hour later, he says, what did he say? And I'm like, mm -hmm. I could just talk about the Beatles. Well, I like go, same thing. I could just go up in inflection. Oh, he does lots of voices, and sometimes it's aggravating. <laughs> I'm laying there next to him, and I'm like, uh, hey, you did. I'm like, hey, you know what? You make me fall deeper in love with you every day. And you know what he says? Did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very important. Yeah. Or if he tells me how beautiful I am as Kermit the Frog. And just, <laughs> You're so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Kermit Flail. Kermit makes everything great. If you're having a crappy day, just look at a, an animated GIF. And not GIF, damn it. I know the creator yeah, said it's yeah, GIF. Yeah. I said, no, GIF's peanut butter. <laughs> Sometimes you can crowdsource the pronunciation of something. I think it's totally acceptable. So I call it a GIF. And yeah, a GIF with, with a just endless Kermit flail. Like you're having a crappy day, it will put a laugh on your, you know, a smile on your face, and you just start laughing like, oh, life is good. <laughs> I think anyway. <laughs> so it entertains me to watch you do it. Yeah, yeah. So we won't talk spoilers since there's one person in the room that hasn't seen Star Wars yet. Is it because you don't care, or? Okay, all right. Well, that's very crowded anyway. Are you, are you the type of person that likes to go when there's nobody in the theater? No, it was just, oh, okay. Well, my mother was going to get us tickets for Christmas, but we didn't want to go out of the set time. Yeah. And it's still crowded no matter when you are. Yeah. Oh, sure. Well, as, as it, it should be. be. As it should be. <laughs> we will beat Avatar eventually. Oh, that's like hours ago. Yeah, good. Good, good. good. Yeah. Um, Back in October, they uh, when they announced or they streamed the, the the final trailer, they also put tickets on sale, advanced tickets on sale, and um, we were at the mall going to look for suits because I don't I wear t-shirts and jeans. I don't own this this dress clothes thing. You know? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, because her son was going to get married, and it's like, do I have to dress up? <laughs> they actually were real sweet. Um, my daughter-in-law was like, eh, just wear, you know, a nice shirt and you know, some nice pants. It's fine. And then he's like, yeah, but everybody else is going to want a suit. I didn't want to stand out there. really that nice. Well, thank you. And the theme was black and orange. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So he had a black suit with an orange tie. And, oh, it looked really good. Yeah, there was a tuxedo rental place in the mall. <laughs> we didn't even know. We went there to buy a suit. And they're like, why don't you just rent it? And we're like, hey, he's in the middle of losing weight. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so why blow $500 on a suit that you can't fit in a year from now and just, you know, run it. So 130 bucks to, to rent it for the week. You know, yeah, including the shoes and everything. Everything. Cufflinks, not that I didn't put on, but, you know, it's still cool. So before we found the tuxedo rental was an option, um, you were looking... You know, we were at like Dillard's or Macy's or something looking, and I was on my phone hitting refresh trying to get Star Wars tickets. <laughs> Priorities! And he almost had them. IMAX 3D, dead yes. center of the screen. Order! And then error. Like, crashed. Oh, it crashed. Oh, right oh, crashed. Did anyone here try to get tickets the day they went on sale? Yes. On yes. yes. How many hours did you have to, or did you, you know? No, like, we found out later you could just go up there. Could have just gone to the box office and just bought them. Yeah. I didn't want to do that. It's so convenient to do it online. <laughs> if, uh, we, my family and I went to see it uh, December uh, like it was a week before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Eighteenth it came out, and then there was a Thursday night on the seventeenth, yep. like a seven p.m. screening. We got into the seven thirty screening, but here's the thing: I am now spoiled by theater chains that have reserved seats. 
I am old, you know, I'm in my mid forties here, and I don't want to stand in line for hours like I did all the other Star Wars movies. And I have other friends who are like, don't you feel like awesome to be part of pop culture and you talk with other fans? It's like, no oh, man, I'm tired, I want to sit down. <laughs> I know how I've been there. Yes, I've all the fields. Right, so now that certain screens, not all, but certain, have reserved seats, this one, this one particular screen, I forget what they call it, they have some fancy name for it. It's not Premier. Box, but it's Premier, Premier something, mm -hmm. at AMC. Uh, they have, what, they're all, Plus leather, leather seats, leather, leather recliners. Leather recliners, yeah. I had to be with Premiere for um, uh, a Star Wars movie. Yes. Yeah, the seats were like so nice and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's there's, there's a chain called iPick. I yeah, think iPick. Actual. That's where we saw it. Those oh. have the leather seats with the on demand. Back. You push the button and the waiter comes yeah. to your yeah. table. Like, hmm. This yeah. is very high. <laughs> yeah, that was also one of the weird risk players. So, uh, the iPad chain guys, uh, they uh, came up with a new thing called Look Cinemas that opened the Dallas. And I got to work here for a while. Yes. And then I worked with several movies, theaters after that. And like 2015, when I saw the movie lineup of like, oh, it's going to be Avengers this summer and then Star Wars in the winter, and I was like, all right, I need a new job because I can't work here with all my favorite stuff playing and getting spoiled because I have to work the weekend. Yeah. And I immediately got a job at Macy's and quit the weekend for entertainment. <laughs> I think projectionists have the coolest jobs. Like, oh, I have to screen this movie to make sure it's okay. <laughs> so you see it before anyone else. I saw your video. Did you get to did you get to hear about the guy who in California went out and yelled spoilers and got the crud beat out of him? That was <laughs> fake. I was no, trying no, to that was a fake that was story. like an yeah. onion type article because no, there's yeah, all these yeah, stories. It's a parody. It's a what? No, it was somebody. Somebody actually did it. So. Oh God. Yeah. I mean, I know there's people out there that 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 went on Twitter. You know, they talk a big talk because it's the internet and you can hide behind anonymity. And yeah. It's like I'm gonna spoil the crap out of this movie. And you know, I don't know what's what's the magic what's the magic number in terms of weeks before it, you think it's okay to start talking. I would say two Never. <laughs> Never. Three years. Never. <laughs> we will be very, very, very respectful and we will not spoil the movie. Um, just one more week, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah especially for this did you, uh, did you enjoy the bridge scene? <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's not really a spoiler. <laughs> I like to think of the droids. So yeah, so we see it, we see it uh, in 2D. I want an IMAX 3D. How many people here don't really care? They I just want to see the movie. I don't want to see the movie. Okay, a majority. Okay. I just want to see the movie. Just want to see the movie, yeah. It, it, it became, it went from, I have to have IMAX 3D, error, 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 refresh, 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 refresh. I just want to see it! <laughs> so we got 2D, it's like, but it has to be in a theater with reserve seating. I'm not standing in line, not standing in line. It's like, oh, I've been on the screen. Oh! Oh, we're good. We're good. It was so nice to see him call me on after four hours. <laughs> hey, it's important. It was important. Because everyone else is like, I'm going to go see Star Wars. Oh, it's sold out, Dorn. that I do, some people will like warm up their voice and sing scales and all that. I've never done that. I do everything wrong. <laughs> Before a session, you shouldn't have coffee or soda. Yeah. It just comes up the work. So you shouldn't have yogurt, you know, because dairy, dairy products create mucus and all sorts of interesting mouth noises come out of you. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you, you guys ever wonder why they have those pop filter screens in front of the mic? That's to protect the mic. And it also deflects certain sounds, like a sibilant sound, like a heavy S's, or a wind sound, or popping, all that stuff that prevents that to a degree. So like with your mic technique, you gotta like pivot your voice slightly to the left and the right. It's never dead center. But in terms of keeping your voice in top shape, obviously, you know, you don't wanna get sick or anything, otherwise you just can't work for a few days. Um, yeah, I go into quarantine if I get sick around it. Zero to dance. 
Yeah, so if you see me like shaking hands, then me pulling out know, hand sanitizer, don't take it personally. And just, you know, we can't get the conflict. You caught conflict, and I managed to not. I stayed so far away from you. But then, 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 then thank God. <laughs> I was worried. I don't want to get sick. No, but she was coughing. I thought, oh my God, I'm definitely going to get this because when she coughs, it sounds like a raptor. <laughs> <laughs> Like, and yeah, sometimes I cheat. I'll go to a session. It's like, I'm a little under the weather. I wonder if they can tell. Yeah, they can totally tell. <laughs> I actually had a screamy, screamy session where I had two hours of screaming at the top of my voice. And then the next morning I had to be Kiva, a Naruto. He oh, was a teenager, but he sounded like he gargled glass and was nine years old. Let's go, come on. <laughs> you can leave now. <laughs> sucks, but um, that's the director's call, the producer's call. You can record an entire run on the show and it comes out and it's not you. But, uh, it's never a personal thing. It's like, I just don't like you, Bob. You smell. <laughs> you keep drinking coffee before your session. <laughs> the Kermit Flail thing, it's really getting old. <laughs> anyway, okay, next one on the row there. Yes. Could you tell us your general experience of working on drone modeling for some Canada? Yes. General experience on any show, but this one in particular, Grand Marga, is it's always exciting to have a new project as game work. <laughs> and it's not about the greed thing, it's not about, oh, I make so much money! No. <laughs> okay. um, but it's the hardest kind of voice work to do. But I love this kind of work because of the challenge of um, being able to go into the studio without prior watching the episodes, there's no rehearsal, there's no reading the script ahead of time, you just show up cold to your session. The director tells you what you need to know. Gurren Lagann I knew about because the previous year, and I follow Anime News Network and all that, it's like, that was one of the big shows of that year. And then it got licensed by ADV, and for whatever reason, they produced a dub, and the volume one was set to come out, and then they just lost the rights. I have no idea what happened there. And then, um, they got it. Um, and then they brought the, and they decided to redub it and use an LA cast. So it's like, wow. They had um, Brett Weaver as Kamiya and Josh Greeley as Simo. And you know, they had me as Kamiya and Yuri Lowenthal. Um, so I feel awkward about that. I mean, it's like, it ends the way it goes. Uh, sort, of, sort of deal. But I knew how popular it was. And when we started dubbing it, they said, we have an accelerated schedule because this show is going to be airing on Sci-Fi Channel. You guys watched Gurren Lagann on yeah. Sci-Fi when it came on? Yeah. Yeah. This was, what, 2010? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, six years ago. A long time ago. Yeah, so we started recording, and we normally record, like, you know, uh, maybe a DVD's worth of episodes every couple weeks or so. But this one was... I was going in, even on only with the first eight, I was wondering. Uh, <laughs> um, I was recording several weeks back to back, I think. Uh, we had to go at a lot faster pace because that stuff has to be approved and go to broadcast. And usually, you know, uh, the TV networks, the Cartoon Network and all that, they want a good chunk of it before they can air it. In the can, as they say. It's done. It's ready to air. And now with Netflix, they have entire shows like Seven Deadly Sins things like that, that before they even give it to them, they say, give us a season of this. Okay. And it's kind of an accelerated schedule. You have to get all the actors in, schedule them one at a time, and then maybe what's called a wall of session to get all that. But uh, yeah, Kamina was, uh, I knew how popular he was in the fandom and everything. It's like, oh God, I hope they like it. I remember reading on Live Journal at the time. Yeah. Live Journal had a fan community and they were just lamb pasting my Kamina for a little bit. And then, to be fair, a lot of otakus, um, they're, they're used to hearing things in Japanese. So if it's not Japanese, they're just, they, they just don't like it. Uh, what are your thoughts on the reason you announced the Mark on TV? Is it a reboot? Or was it a teaser image to well, that logo and people don't know what it is so they hope it's a new series? I don't know. If they've announced something, 
then that would be great. Because, again, doctor concedes. It's like, hey, can we just go retell the story? I was hoping they would do, when they did the two movies, that they would just, because they, they retold the series. They have an opportunity to make it a little bit different. And, and sometimes the anime movies are a little bit different. Usually there's room to get cheap and recycle the animation. And throw in a couple of scenes with a little bit of dialogue changes. And it's never as good to encapsulate a 26 episode or more into 90 minutes or less. It's like there's always something that's lost in translation. It's not as good, even if they put more animation on it. But I always thought that it would be interesting to take someone like a major character dies and then do something to where that character didn't die. How would that affect everything else? I think that would be an interesting storytelling. Would it be successful? Who knows? But at least it would be a bold experiment. So that, from a completely selfish standpoint, <laughs> I would hope that they would bring back the show, which I have no idea. It could mean they're just making a game. I don't know. Hopefully Japan has seen what effect Gurren Lagann has had on the American, North American uh, fandom. Because it's been huge. It's been huge for years. What I signed autographs for is mostly Kamina and Gohan still, as you can see. But that's, that's really impressive that a one season show really resonated with the fans. Yeah, like five more minutes. Yeah, yes. Oh, where do you start? Uh, if you're still in school, take advantage of the drama program. <laughs> Definitely. He's like, but I'm shy and all that. It's like, well, you got to find a way to overcome that. Because I had stage fright growing up. I wasn't involved in drama. I got involved in radio. Because I like the, the fascination about being not stared at. <laughs> and I could be behind the mic and do what I wanted. And that's kind of what voice acting is. But they are different beasts. Because DJs that try to cross over into voice acting end up sounding like announcers. And they have to train, and they have to take acting classes to get away from that announcer sort of thing. Hey everybody, I'm a voice actor. <laughs> no, you do, you know, you're on the, on the radio. But something that, that that gave me, what getting on the student radio station in my college was, and helped build my confidence, so I became less shy over time. And then getting on Dragon Ball Z, yeah, you have to have some natural talent for it, some natural flair. And luckily they believed me when I went in and I said, I don't have any acting experience, but I'm on radio Disney, does that count? It's like, oh yeah, I just have to do But I was a DJ for radio, yeah. I doing writing and producing and character voices, not actual Disney characters, but like our own little thing, edutainment type features. And they, they did it, so it was like, luck has a huge part to do with it too. It's not necessarily whether you have talent or not, there's not tons of talented people that are undiscovered and will continue to be, but the internet is changing. Justin Bieber and YouTube, right? For better or worse, people are getting discovered through different means. Just like filmmakers are putting in, animators are, are putting their own things and then the studios paying attention. Or being movie teams because they saw their short. Things like that. Um, you can get involved in fan dubs if you want, but that's not considered professional work experience. You want to get taken seriously, be a voice actor, act. Get on camera, get on stage, get behind the mic, take those classes, train, train, train. It will not happen overnight. Um, <coughs> you have to consider what kind of what kind of voice work do you want to do? Is it character stuff? Do you want to do like anime? Uh, games? I want to vary, you know what I mean? I want to, I do want to do anime, I want to do the game. Right. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind getting like on front of camera too. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Any major city is going to have a lot of radio TV commercial. Uh, opportunities. But in terms of anime, obviously Houston and Dallas, I mean, Houston is the closest, I guess, but Dallas is the hub of Funimation. But I would never say, hey, pick up and move to Dallas because it's one company. You move to the West Coast, for example, Los Angeles, there's tons of opportunity. Now, it doesn't mean that everyone's going to get hired, but there's the opportunity to read for it. And that's what you have to remember. When you, when you have an audition, you have to treat that as the job. You know, you have to. Uh, just consider that you are steps beyond what other people they haven't had a chance to get into that booth so, so be grateful if you have a chance to read for something it's still not get cast it's still a huge step forward and you will learn from that you will take away like what worked what didn't work was i nervous was i you know because you got to be confident you have to have good cold reading skills improv skills and you will hone these things through taking classes and workshops and talking to people. If you can find a voiceover specific coach, absolutely take advantage of that. There are websites for small projects all over that you look at. 
Absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's things like voice123 or voices.com. You can pay a fee, like $300 a year. But I mean, these are people that are already trained. Uh, but some people take a misnomer as like, oh, I get auditions and all that stuff. It's like, yeah, but you're reading against the whole world as opposed to maybe a couple hundred people reading for something. There's thousands of people in different time zones that have already submitted auditions and all that. So there's ups and downs to it. There's a lot of low paying gigs. If you go on Craigslist, like, yeah, read this audio book for 10 bucks and credit. <laughs> you know, it's like, you gotta ask yourself, are you willing to work for peanuts for years or work for free for years and decide, okay, now I, I feel as an actor, I'm ready to start getting paid more. Um, and then eventually you seek representation in the agent. But you have to have a demo first before you can get an agent. So you train first, get your acting experience, then you do a demo, then you mail it out to an agent, the agent represents you, you still need to network and meet people in the industry. You can't just rest on your laurels and like, oh, well, I have an agent, the agent will get me work. The agent's job is not to get you work, the agent's job is to get you auditions. That's, that's what an agent's worth is. If they're not getting you auditions, then you just kind of walk your way, walk away from that arrangement and find another agent. Uh, but most of the work that I get in animated video games are found through my industry contacts with Bang Zoom, and Studiopolis, and other people that are actors who are also directors, Catherine Sides, Liam O'Brien, Wendy Lee, Richard Epcar. These people I've worked with for years, but they also direct projects. It's like, hey, I know you're, you're good at this stuff. I'm going to have you read for this. Sweet. So it's kind of a domino effect. It does take a lot of time and a lot of patience and a thick skin and not being cast most of the time. So that's kind of what it boils down to. Yes? Is there, was there a time when you were recording something like emotional and you like caught the feel? Mm -hmm. like it, like oh yeah. Gamina. <laughs> or Arkiva during the filler arc in Naruto before she grew that he had like, you know, Akatari was about to die or something. Like that. Yeah, I got a little choked up. That's true. But normally I'm having fun with the characters. They're, they're screaming, they're being crazy and water and stuff. So. I love this job. It's the coolest thing to go in and play these characters because it doesn't matter what you look like. Yeah. I'm a buff teenager, I swear. <laughs> okay. So I see the allure. And I can see how people that do on screen like, I'm going to do this voice acting thing. It's like, yes, you do, but please don't take my job. Go <laughs> <laughs> stay on your side of the playground. <laughs> ah. All right, boys and girls, it is, it is time. But thank you for coming on.